hey guys welcome back to another video on my channel and this video is about unreal engine and i'm going to show you how you can implement a modular clothing system in your gaming project so this is going to be a series of videos where i will cover a very basic example to implement clothing system for the characters in unreal engine and in this first video i will demonstrate the working of the example and I will talk a bit about the assets which I have used in this sample gaming project. So after this, in the next video, I will implement a new set of clothing outfit for our character from scratch and I will show you all the steps necessary. So a clothing system is a must to have in your gaming projects if you want to have dynamic characters with different appearances in different situations and scenes. You need to have different clothing assets for in-game movies too so this is something which needs to be figured out in the very beginning about the assets which we need to use it mainly depends on the type of characters you are using you can either bake the clothing asset into the character mesh or you can use them like an overlay child mesh over a parent character mesh i will show you in the example what i'm talking about either way you will need to have a system in place to switch between different clothing outfits so without wasting any more time, I'm going to show you by uh, running this example what I have done and uh, you can see how the clothing assets of the character which I have used in this example can be changed. So this is a third person BP uh, template project and over here I have added a character with uh, some default clothing on. Now this cube is basically an interactive object which the player character can interact with using the E key and over here there are several buttons which can be used to apply different outfits and, and to apply different poses. So right now the, uh, the, outfit, the, the first outfit is applied to this character, to this female character and uh, if I will go ahead and click on apply outfit to button then the outfit is changed into a different one and the previous one has been removed similarly there is a third outfit over here and apart from this we can also change the poses and whenever the, the pose of the character is changed then you can see that the uh, that the clothing asset is also adjusting itself according to the pose which is being applied to the main character so I have done this because I wanted to show you that uh, this system will work for any kind of pose or animation that you will apply to your characters so whatever animations that you will apply to your to your main character mesh that animation will be applied to the clothing meshes as well which have been used in this project and similarly we can apply more poses over here and yep, that's it okay so what i will show you now is i will talk about the assets which i have used in this example because it is a very important thing to talk about so whenever we start working on any gaming project or on any other uh, project which involves using 3d models then the first thing which we need to decide is the assets which we are going to use in our project because it is a long-term decision and uh, when we have selected a set of three, three dimensional assets to be used in our project then later on in the life cycle of the project it is very difficult to replace those assets with something else and actually it happens sometimes because uh, we realize that the, the the 3d assets which we are using are not sufficient for a specific behavior or for any specific uh, i don't know requirement which we have in mind so we may decide to replace the 3d asset with another one which is capable of that requirement which we want to implement but we are too far in the project life cycle that it becomes uh, pretty difficult to do it and if we still press on to replace the characters then it will basically result in a, a very big overhaul of the entire project code files so um, it's pretty important to 
make a make a good decision when we are starting the project to select the right kind of uh, three dimensional assets to use in our uh, in, our, in our development life cycle all right guys so before we continue i would like to talk about the assets which i have used in this project so the character and clothing assets which i have used in this example have been taken from das3d.com so if you don't already know about it das3d offers uh, different uh, kinds of tools and assets which can be used in the production of three dimensional and two dimensional images so uh, there is a website which is das3d.com and it offers you a, a free tool which is uh, called as das studio and it looks like this so this is a das studio and uh, here is a character which is loaded along with uh, different uh, other assets uh, clothing assets and there's a hair too which is applied to this character and you can do a lot of different things with this character and you can then convert this information into either photoreal images or you can also export the animations or uh, 3d character information so that they can be imported into other development environments like maybe Unreal Engine, Unity, uh, Visual Studio, etc. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about the uh, about the license of the assets, which you need to be aware of whenever uh, you are using any of the Dash Three D assets. So if you decide to go ahead and make use of das assets uh, it could be a character it could be a clothing asset then you must also be aware that there are different kinds of licenses involved which you need to purchase when you are using any asset in in your uh, three-dimensional application so for an example let's say that um, let's open this one so this is a, a modern loft and it looks like some kind of um, house which is uh, ready to render so you can uh, basically use this uh, use this asset in two different ways you can either render photoreal images out of uh, different angles of this object or you can use this entire 3d object in a in, in a gaming project so the difference is that when you are only using this object to render images then you are only selling the images or you are only distributing the two dimensional image data to the end users but uh, when you are using this asset in a 3d game then you will need to supply the entire three dimensional polygon information along with the project files so that the entire scene can be rendered in a in a 3d environment so when you are not distributing the actual 3d information then the standard license will will be applicable but for everything other than that when you are uh, not limited to distributing the, the the content or when you are not limited to publishing the content which is only two dimensional in nature then you will need to purchase this interactive license and interactive license costs more and it covers things like you know distributing the object along with your project files when you are distributing your game and maybe when you are 3d printing any character or any other 3d asset then also i think you will need to have the inter interactive license you can read the exact license text by going in the help and support i think so yep there's that that's something which you need to be aware of and why i am explaining you all of this because uh, whenever you are starting to work on on a game or any other uh, 3d project then uh, you need to make some decisions about the assets which you are going to use and you must be aware of all the pros and cons of the vendor which you are using to uh, supply the 3d assets for your project because um, there could be certain requirements or certain uh, behaviors which you might want to implement 
in the in the 3d assets but later on you can discover or you can find out that the 3d assets which you're using simply don't support those behaviors but now it's too late to replace them with something else so i mean it's difficult to ascertain what will come up in the future but still it's uh, always a good idea to uh, decide all the things which you are going to do in your game and then try to make the best decision out of that information so with that i will leave you guys over here and i will see you in the next video in the next video i will uh, show you how to uh, how to uh, use the code and how to add another uh, clothing outfit to this already existing system and i will also walk you through all the different uh, blueprints which are part of this uh, small example so that you can try this on your own so yep i hope that uh, you like this video and thanks for watching this video guys and it would be really helpful if you will um, subscribe to my channel and also if you like this video so that others uh, can also find this video easily if they want to do something like what i have shown in this example so um see you later in the in the next video guys have a nice day